My two new watches uh, arrived this morning and um, let's take a look at them. So this is the watch I originally went on the website to buy from Mercure uh, Watches. And I saw this watch and um, I really liked it so I bought that one as well. Um, I will do uh, an unboxing and I'll, I'm gonna do this one first and then I'll get to that one in another video and I'll show you that one but um, I'll put a link to the that watch below. God, this is a bit tough. I do like the case um, of both both of them. Um, this one is really nice. It's got this kind of ca carbon fiber look to it and it actually reminds me a lot of my Breitling case. But if you look at the size of it, this one is a lot bigger. But yeah. So this is the watch I went to the website um, to buy. Now I blame Aaron from the OFD channel. Um, I'll put a link to his channel. He does um, watch reviews. He does a lot of affordable watches. So uh, go and check out his channel. Um, he's got some great videos and I'm constantly buying watches that he keeps showing on the on the channel. And this was one of them he had. And um, I really liked it. Um, it's very similar to my 1963 Siegel. Uh, and this is basically, it actually does say on the website um, regarding the 1963 Siegel as well. Uh, and I just liked it and it was, incredibly affordable it's got this stretchy strap now the strap probably is going to be too big for me yes yeah um so you can take the links out of this but there's such a pain and um it, it's i'm not going to use it on this strap anyway i'll probably put it in a leather i think it'll look a lot better on a leather strap uh, but it is so 1970s i do like it i don't know i'll see what will what will happen um if i keep it on this um, it is just, I don't have all the tools, but you can take the the links out um, to uh, to adjust it. So I'd need to take quite a few out, but um, I'll see how it goes. But let me show you what else is in the box. So you've got their uh, their their uh, details if you want to buy their watches as a website, and uh, you've got some other stuff in here: cleaning cloth. Oh. And the warranty card, I assume, but um, I do like this box. It's it's actually not as thick, it is a bit, but as a travel case, it's quite nice, I think, to, to have. Um, I'm just going to wear the watch as it is. Now, it's got 20 millimeter lugs, so I'll probably put on a, on a leather strap, but I've been wearing the watch now for about a week, so let me give you some specifications and my thoughts on the watch. So it's 38 millimeters in diameter. It's got 44 millimeters from lug to lug. And it's got 20 millimeters uh, lug size, so to find straps is really easy. I'm glad they didn't go down the route of uh, putting in uh, odd number lug size like 19 and 21, which just make it a little bit more difficult to find a nice strap. Now it is 12 millimeters thick. Now if you look at the side of the watch, four millimeters of that alone is uh, the actual Hesalite crystal. I've never had a watch which. Uh, has had such a thick crystal but I think it suits it really well. Now 38, it is 38 millimeters like I said but it feels a lot bigger and I think that's down to the lugs. The lugs if you look at them they are very thick and once it's on your wrist it feels like it's a much thicker watch than it actually is. Now if you compare that to my vintage uh, Chinese watch which I bought uh, in Shanghai uh, this one is dating back to the late 60s and early 70s so it's, uh, it's on par with this one. This is a re-edition of a late uh, 60s and 70s watch. The watch you can actually buy either on a, this bracelet or you can uh, buy it on a, a nylon strap. Now, I went for the bracelet because I'm, I can just change the bracelet. I do like this bracelet. Um, they're very comfortable. As you can see on my other watch, it has the same, same type of bracelet, which is stretchy. They're just so comfortable to wear. Now, unfortunately, uh, I don't have the tools to change the bracelet, uh, take out all the links, so um, I couldn't do it. And um, all the uh, watchmakers are closed at the moment, so uh, I can't have it changed, but I will have it changed. I'm currently wearing it on this uh, one-piece handmade leather strap. But as I said earlier, with it having 20 millimeter lugs, you can have an endless supply of straps. Uh, I've been constantly changing from leather straps to crocodile straps and uh, nylon straps. The watch is powered by a Hanzhou SL07 hand winding movement. Uh, that's without hacking. For those of you who don't know what hacking is, it's when you uh, pull out the crown and the second hand would stop if it's hacking. Uh, with this being a, uh, an old fashioned basic movement, it doesn't hack. 
Now, I'm really glad that they didn't put a, um, a Seiko movement in here. Like most uh, micro brands, they would put a NH35 movement in there and then just cover up the date. And then you'd have that ghost uh, date uh, function on the, on the crown when you pull it out. It's much better without. And being a vintage re-edition of a Chinese watch, to have a Chinese movement, I think is the best thing. Now, hand winding, you've got to wind it every day. Now, this crown is just so small. It's really hard to get a grip on. I wish they'd made it uh, at least a millimeter bigger. It would have made it easier to wind every day. Now, the crown has the star logo on there. I would have preferred them not to have the logo and just have a plain crown. It would have been more in keeping with uh, the watch back in the 60s and 70s. Anyone familiar with the Siegel chronograph will immediately recognize what the dial is. And if you see, look at them both together, they're almost identical. Without um, the subdials, you would say they're, they're from the same company, which they're not. Now, personally, I wish they'd gone in their own direction and not just copied the Siegel, <clears throat> auto, uh, Siegel chronograph movement. It would have been much nicer if they'd come up with something themselves. I can see why they did it, because the Siegel chronograph was a huge hit. Uh, there was uh, a lot of people who just raved about that to watch, and I, I do like mine as well. I think it offers exceptional value for money, and so does this. Uh, but if they'd gone their own road, I think it would have been a lot better, instead of just copying the dial almost exactly. If they'd had maybe hour markers uh, instead of markers and numerals, um, and maybe even changed the color of the dial. But uh, the one, of the, the biggest change they did make was the handset. I really do like this handset. Uh, if you look at it closely, you can just see it has this rough sand edge finish. I wasn't sure if I would like it, but I'm glad they did this instead of having it polished because with it being polished, sometimes you get a really bright glare when you look at the, the watch. But with this, the way the light hits it from different angles, it never glares. Uh, and I do like that a lot. The dial is curved at the edges, which you don't really see until you look at it from the side. Uh, the minutes and the second hand, are, the edges are also slightly curved to go around it. And I do like that. The, both of them reach all the way to the edge. And I think that's why they had to have them curved. Otherwise, it wouldn't reach the edge. Now, the watch is only 30 meters water resistant. And that's because it's not a screw down crown. But um, personally, I've never had any problems with 30 meter waterproof watches. Uh, I've actually gone swimming with a 30 meter water resistant watch. And I, it was absolutely fine. I had no problems with it whatsoever. With a, a vintage watch, I definitely wouldn't, even if it was a 50 meter or 100 meter vintage watch, I wouldn't uh, take it into the water. But with, uh, with a modern watch, I think you're fine to go into the water with a 30 meter water resistant watch. The watch has an engraved stainless steel back case. I'm really glad they didn't put in a see-through back case. It would have ruined the watch, I think. Uh, the movement is just a basic three hand movement. Uh, so I don't think it's anything special to look at. Uh, and watches of this era, 60s and 70s, would have had a stainless steel case back like this one. So on the graving, you've got uh, Zheng Guo Ju, which stands for Made in China. And then on the bottom here, you've got Chen Dan, which translates to stainless, oh, steel made. So it's made from steel. And then uh, on this side, you have Fan Jin, uh, which stands for shockproof. Now on the website, it actually doesn't say anything about the watch being shockproof. So I'm not sure if it actually is shockproof. Now what they've done is they've taken an old vintage Chinese watch and copied it exactly. So all the text, uh, all the characters are taken from uh, a, an old watch. So they don't translate exactly to modern Chinese uh, characters. For example, the characters that are underneath the red star, uh, it actually translates to waterproof. So it's 19 waterproof. Uh, and that's mainly because of the characters. And these characters now mean something completely different now. You'd have to go into the history of China to understand why the characters are different now to uh, what they were back in the 60s. Uh, I like my vintage watches. And the, the problem with vintage watches is you can't wear them all the time because they're so fragile. The watch is currently for sale on their website for $100. Now, when I got the watch, uh, they were $60 per watch, but you had to buy three watches. Uh, now you can buy one watch at a time for $100. Now, they've increased the price. Is that because the watch is becoming popular? So they've increased the prices. Uh, I can remember the same thing happened with the Seagull chronograph. 
uh, the prices started going up as the watch got more and more popular. So I'm glad I got it at that price. Even for $100, I think it's an absolute bargain. There is another watch which I would say is in direct competition with this, and that's this one here. This is uh, another vintage inspired modern watch, uh, the Vostok's Komandersky. Um, so you've got one from Russia and one from China. So I think I would say they're in direct competition. This one also now has increased in price. On Amazon, this is the same price as that. So it's $100, uh, more or less uh, 75 pounds, which works out $100. So I rebought this watch uh, so I can make a follow-up video where I put both watches head to head. So um, I'll do that um, right after this. Uh, so stay tuned for that video.